This is another story from the Haunted Cha Cha archives. This one is called The Doppelganger. Life is busy in our home. There's always something that needs to be done, but it is a happy home with four children running about or sulking, as teenagers sometimes do. Sometimes I just don't notice what is going on within the hustle and the bustle of everyday living that visitors sometimes do notice. I've known Lucy since I was a year old. We grew up together and were always more like sisters than just friends. So when I moved into my new home, she couldn't wait to come and visit and let me know what she thought. We hadn't been as close in the months leading up to my moving home because she said she felt uncomfortable in the flat where we used to live. She always felt as though there was someone else in the room that she couldn't see. Moving home wasn't just a chance to live in a beautiful house, it was a chance for Lucy and me to start our friendship growing again. Lucy knocked on the door at one in the afternoon and I ran to open it. She leapt in the front door and we were both laughing, chatting and hugging at the same time. She took a step back to look properly, a first glance of my new home. Looking upwards to the staircase, she said, Hi Craig. The hallway and staircase was lined with photographs at the time, so I just assumed that she was making a joke about the quite large family portrait hung at the turn of the stairs. I ushered Lucy into my home, through the newly decorated lounge and into my massive kitchen. The kettle was put on, the tea was made and we sat chatting for a while. Isn't Craig coming down for a cuppa? she asked. Of course, I was a little puzzled. Craig, my husband, I explained to Lucy, was at work and had been out all day. Lucy immediately thought I was playing a joke on her and let me know straight away that she couldn't be fooled as she had seen him at the top of the stairs when she had first arrived at the house. Naturally, I asked what she had seen exactly. She described a figure stood at the banisters on the landing at the top of the stairs, even describing the white socks Craig was wearing as his toes poked through the gaps in between the banister rails. She told me that the figure was wearing jeans and he had his hands on the banisters, but she couldn't see the top of the figure or his face because he was probably leant backwards. Don't wind me up, Char, she said with a giggle and a smile. Because you know that I said hello to Craig when I came in and you didn't say anything then. I assured Lucy that Craig really was at work and that there was no one in the house except for me and my youngest child, who, being only six months old, couldn't possibly be the, be the person she had seen at the top of the stairs. By now, I was more than a little worried. Had a stranger somehow entered the house without me knowing? Was this person dangerous? Lucy was obviously thinking exactly the same thing, and we voted we both go upstairs and check the bedrooms. Armed with a mobile phone and a hammer, we both started to walk up the stairs. Nervousness must have been taking over as we both got the giggles as we jumped into each room with a scream and a yell and proceeded by opening cupboards with a gotcha! But there was definitely nobody there at all. We really were the only people in the house. Lucy was nervous but tried to cover her feelings by letting me know that she just probably saw a shadow. But she kept looking behind her worriedly, as I suggested we both go downstairs now. I, I just got to use the bathroom first, Lucy said. I went on downstairs on my own to make another pot of tea. A few minutes later, Lucy came scrambling down the stairs, crying and out of breath. As she had been going into the toilet, she had felt someone push her into the bathroom with some force. She turned and, not seeing anyone behind her, had tried to close the sliding door of the bathroom. But the last few inches, as she pushed the door closed, the door seemed to move itself and then closed with force. 
Then, from the outside, there was a knocking sound. Someone was knocking on the bathroom door. The knocking became a banging as the door vibrated violently. Knock it off, Char, Lucy had cried, but it carried on. Lucy threw the door across, hoping to catch me out, but I wasn't there. Nobody was there. I was downstairs making some tea, and we had already checked all of the rooms upstairs before Lucy had gone into the bathroom, and that's when she had ran down the stairs to come and find me. Lucy grabbed her coat and her bag and left my house within minutes. I love you, Char. You're like my very own sister. But I swear, I'll never come willingly into this house again. Those were her parting words to me. She did come back once, when she was expecting her little girl, but she never went upstairs and sat in the garden for a while, but sat, felt so uncomfortable that she told me she couldn't visit again. She hated that house and can never understand how I could very happily live there. Several people have had the same bathroom experience as Lucy, including Louise, Charlotte and myself. Louise is a very frequent visitor to my home and has shared some unusual experiences, all involving the knocking of the bathroom door and also a phantom coughing. I since remodelled the bathroom and have built a wall to separate the toilet from the bathroom itself. In doing so, I had changed the door to form two separate doorways. Although the violent shaking and knocking no longer happened, there were still unexplained noises at the top of the stairs outside the bathroom doors, including a rustled sound, as though someone were wearing slippers and shuffling along and also the sound of someone brushing up against a door from the outside. My grandfather wouldn't visit that house. He also wouldn't visit the house I lived in as a small child, and my mother still hated having to go upstairs alone. Strangely, I feel comforted by this presence, and my children seem to feel much the same as I. Craig, my husband, says a little on the subject, and is the voice of reason. He tries to rationalise all that happens in that home, and what he can't explain, he tries to ignore, though he does make jokes about him haunting himself.